Hi, everyone. Uh, thanks very much for inviting me to present at this workshop. So uh, this is going to be a talk about a paper, Local Deep Implicit Functions for 3D Shapes, uh, which is a collaboration between Princeton University and Google. Um, so let's dive right in. So there's been a lot of progress on uh, representing shapes uh, with a learned implicit surface function. Uh, occupancy networks is an example of this. And uh, the idea here is that you, know, you, you have this learned function f of x, where x is a location in 3D space, and the network learns a scalar uh, output um, that gives you inside outside at x, y, z. And uh, while this has been great for single view reconstruction and auto encoding, I want to talk about one limitation of this approach, which is that the global latent code um, that is sort of the bottleneck layer of this setup, the output of the encoder, the input to the decoder besides the XYZ location, has to describe the whole shape all at once. And in doing so, it makes it hard to scale or generalize beyond the training classes, because that's what the latent space describes. Now, putting that aside for a second, there's been recent work on learning a structured decomposition of space. Uh, so in this uh, um, paper, there's a, like a learned structural uh, decomposition that has uh, repeatable shape elements, which here are rendered as Gaussian ellipsoids that uh, are always sort of in the same uh, location relative to one another, deforming as sort of an unsupervised template space. And uh, that's been good for shape analysis, but not so much for uh, shape reconstruction. Now, the key idea of our paper is to use a template, an unsupervised learn template, to have local latent codes that contain an implicit surface um, embedding that can be decoded in the same way, but have a, a position and an extent in space that's determined by an RBF falloff function that the global template provides. And we then can uh, combine the local uh, uh, decoded functions and blend them, um, and we get uh, a reconstruction that's higher fidelity and uh, more generalizable and more efficient. So uh, this is similar to uh, structured implicit functions because we have this unsupervised learned template, but uh, distinct in that we also have latent features associated with each template element, and it's similar to occupancy networks except that uh, we represent, um, we have a local feature vector is not a single global one. Okay, so uh, our pipeline uh, takes in one or more depth images. Now, uh, for autoencoding, say if you have a mesh, then what you can do is uh, render um, a stack of depth images, uh, a dodecahedron of them, uh, which will give you uh, so images like this, and then that will be the input. Um, or if you have uh, just a single depth image, as long as it's posed, that's fine too. Um, you just need the extrinsics. So given that, the next thing that we do is we uh, extract the uh, shape elements using a ResNet. And uh, this gives us the analytic parameters of each of the Gaussian ellipsoids, and those define affine coordinate frames, which we can then use to uh, get the neural features. So the way we're going to do that is we uh, take the depth images, we use the extrinsics to unproject un them into a, um, a point cloud, and um, then we transform them into each of the local coordinate frames of the ellipsoids, right? Which gives us a point cloud like you're seeing here, the, the head uh, point cloud. Then um, we run that through a point net um, and get a feature vector for the uh, particular shape element. We repeat this in turn for each of the shape elements 
and uh, we get a set of uh, feature vectors that way. If you concatenate the template parameters and the deep features, that gives you the entire representation. And if you would like to evaluate it at a query location in space to get inside outside at that location in space, then you transform the query to a particular frame um, of one of the elements. You compute the analytic influence of the RBF function uh, there. You have a local decoder, which is a small network that goes from XYZ to uh, the scalar. And uh, we have a way of combining them. You can look in the paper for more details. And then that's RBF weighted. So you sum up for all of the embedding vector, sum up for all of the shape elements. And that gives you the overall inside outside function value uh, for that location. Um, now, if you want to evaluate on a, a local grid, you can get a mesh back out of that um, if you run marching cubes. Now I'm going to show shape autoencoding experiments. This is the first of the experiments. This is intended to sort of show, uh, answer the question, if is partial observations are not a concern, if you have full information, how detailed and accurate can the representation be? So uh, here we see per performance improvements in the detail um, uh, of the reconstructions and how well they um, uh, match match the local parts, right? Um, but this doesn't tell you the whole story, just looking at a few examples. So I wanna convince you a little more thoroughly. So here are all of the results on the test set, which is 8,746 shapes um, sorted by our F score. So that's the blue curve, is our result sorted by F score. Then, uh, we show uh, the orange curve is OCNET's performance on the same shapes. Um, the rolling mean is the curve, and then the faded orange behind it is the example on the specific shapes. The same for SIF in green. Uh, we uh, have the highest reconstruction uh, results um, uh, on 90% of examples. And uh, one other thing to note is that it appears that the shapes are similarly difficult for all uh, methods. Um, the LDIF representation also uh, uh, generalizes uh, better than uh, using a single latent vector. Uh, so if you go to unseen classes like piano, printer, camera, uh, the delta between uh, existing methods and LDIF increases. Next, we show um, completing a posed depth image. So the input depth image show, is shown as a posed point cloud on the left. Then a second column, the shape you'd like to complete. Third column, our result. Fourth column, uh, current state of the art. And uh, we see about a 15 point improvement for LDIF compared to existing methods. Uh, LDIF also does well for template fitting. So uh, it doesn't do nearly as well as supervised methods, which require a handcrafted template and uh, key point annotations, but it does improve over uh, SIF, uh, uh, which is the state of the art for sort of unsupervised template fitting and registration. Um, there's also a consistent decomposition of shape. So uh, here you can see that um, even though there was no supervision on the uh, uh, correspondence, the uh, algorithm automatically finds sort of a coarse correspondence between these different posed humans. Um, you can see sort of the template color indicates the ID, ID identifier for the template element. Uh, finally, um, uh, efficient decoding is another big benefit. So uh, F score improves by uh, 10 points, but at the same time, the number of decoder parameters decreases by two orders of magnitude, which uh, makes it possible to evaluate just densely on a 128 cubed grid at 20 frames a second. Uh, so no need for um, more sophisticated uh, inference methods there, as long as that's fast enough. And uh, so, yeah, I just want to leave you that the key idea is to represent uh, shapes with global templates that have local latent codes associated with the template elements that give you the fine details, and that lets you be more generalizable, higher fidelity, and uh, more efficient. So thanks very much for watching. Uh, there is a code uh, available at 
ldiff.cs.princeton.edu. And these are the, uh, uh, the authors. Um, thank you very much.